see, I'm allotted 15 minutes on YouTube to uh, basically show you my way to process a deer. I do not claim it's the best way, but uh, it works well for me. In about four hours, I can have my deer done. Um, my meat will taste better than from a processor, and I will have less waste. So, hope it helps. Okay, I've had my deer hanging for two days. Ideally, you want to meet uh, 45 degrees for two days, and you'll get the best curing that way. Um, I don't spend money on bags of ice, but I fill up two liters because it's free, freeze them, and I hang uh, one each near each quarter, one near the neck roast, one along the back there to protect the chops. And uh, if it's very warm at all, I'll actually fill the chest cavity with a skill saw. A couple of two What's the skill saw for, you ask? You can use your bone saw if you want the exercise, but I prefer to buzz the limbs off right above the joints. Right about in here. And I use the skill there saw. You have it. Now what I'm going to do is take my fillet knife and I'll cut from here up to the base of the chin. Cut a line inside inside here. Bring it over. Do the same thing down here with the lower leg. Make a line from about here down to here on each side. And then I will start to peel down the skin. Okay, except for uh, cutting the limbs off, my entire processing um, outside of uh, grinding hamburger is done simply with a fillet knife. It's the only tool I use. And uh, okay, I have my slices three. made. I have that one. I have these here on both sides. I cut straight up the neck. It really doesn't matter if you go through the windpipe or not. Cause we're going to take that out. And then I've cut around the base of the head here, right tight to the uh, spine. And that's uh, the top of my neck roast. And, uh, Okay, I uh, can remove the front the quarter, front shoulder. You just simply uh, shave in between here, and you all you're going to do is just cut around that shoulder blade, and it's going to pop right off. That's as easy as it is. There's nothing holding that on, except cartilage. Okay, for the hind quarter. I uh, got to go around, and I follow that that rump, that leg muscle, and I stay tight to the tail. Keep the blade pointed as close to the center of the deer as I can, and then I'll go around on the front side. And there's a ball and socket we have to get to. Okay, and I will show you that. I've shaved around there, and you just stay tight to the center of the deer. Try to protect as much of that uh, steak meat as you can. Um, some of this back here is going to be rump roast, so if you nick it, it's not life or death. But there's that ball right there. It's ball and socket, and you cut the little cartilage in between it, and this leg will fall right okay, off. Okay, now uh, here's the socket I'm, I was talking about, where the ball was at. And it's impossible to show you until we get to this step. What you're doing is you're shaving that meat basically right along this bone. You get that all shaved up good. This thing's going to be ready to drop, so hold on when you cut that okay, ball. Okay, I did socket. decide to go ahead and quarter this first, but uh, now that it's quartered, um, I'm going to go after the chops. First the neck roast up there, then the chops. These little fruit bees are a little aggravation. They get all over these things, but uh, they're pretty harmless. Now the chops are right here. Got a little quarter inch layer of uh, fat and membrane and meat that I'll be peeling off the outside of the uh, chops exposing the chops and then I'll go after the chops. Okay, for the neck roast what I'm going to do is cut a slice around the base of the neck bring it all the way tight to the spine all the way around then up here I'm going to slice right down to the spine 
and then you're just going to shave around the edge of the spine while you're peeling back all the way around and you'll pull off your uh, neck roast and I like to grill them with butter. Okay, right here oh, you yeah. have your uh, yeah. basically your plank steaks you just shave them off right there over the front shoulder okay now what you want to do is uh, along the back here right basically over your chops you're going to have this thin layer here that you want to remove all the way down give yourself a little bit of extra width so that you uh, can take your time with shaving the chops down uh, probably the number one cut you don't want to waste any meat on. Okay now I've got the uh, membrane peeled off on both sides all the way down which goes from the base of the neck all the way down here to basically just about the base of the tail is. Excuse me for the bees. What you do, you can actually run your finger right along this edge all the way down. You want to make sure you got a nice good start to the edge there. And what you're going to do is take your knife up here right along the backbone. Shave as tight to that backbone as you can all the way down the line here. And then you will slowly peel it down. Okay, once you've uh, basically shaved along the edge of that backbone there, um, you start at the top, get yourself a little starter at the top, and then you pull down very easily. You don't want to apply much pressure here because you will rip your chops. They are so tender. And you want to slowly shave right there as you pull down in a big semi-circle. And uh, try not to uh, waste any more meat than you have to. But here's uh, basically what it, your back straps are going to look like, or chops, um, if you're doing it right. You can see the surface that you have to shave around right there. Just take your time, go slow. I only use the tip of the knife in an up and down fashion. Slowly pulling down while I'm shaving around. Okay, and here we have our back straps. Nice long area to cut up for chops. You can see it's pretty nice and lengthy when you're done. It should be two and a half feet long or so for a medium deer. Better than three Ooh. feet on a big deer. And there we have back strap number two. Nice long muscle. Right in here you have your tenderloins. One, two. And on each side. What your tenderloins look like. You get two of them. And it is the finest cut on the deer. And if you're a good boy, maybe you can talk to the boss and she'll cook them up for you as a snack while you're finishing your process. Hey, my work is done out here. So now I'll clean up my mess and then I uh, will take my cuts of meat and clean them up. Separate all the muscle groups. Okay, cut all my cuts. Woodsman Jim is playing with the pool table. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? Okay, I've got my uh, chops here, back straps. Um, basically what I do is I cut them into thirds so they're easier to deal with. And I'm going to remove this membrane right here. Um, then I'll clean them up and then I will cut them against the grain. Always cut all your meats against the grain. Separate all your muscle groups. And don't worry about having a big steak. You're doing yourself a disservice. My deer have zero game. Zero gaminess to them. And that's because I, of course, removed the bone and clean up the meat. All you have is plain meat. And it stays very tender, regardless, even big bucks will stay tender. If I don't worry about big steaks, separate all the muscle groups in the big steaks. Clean them up and cut them. Okay, what I'm going to do is separate all of this all the way around off the chops. And I'll clean that up with my Okay, finger. now that's done. I'm going to flip it over. And uh, I'm going to remove basically this skin off of there. Okay. 
What I like to do is stick the knife under here and use the sawing motion. Save as much meat as I can. Okay, now that it's all cleaned up, I'm going to start with a slightly diagonal cut. Diagonal cut. Like this. Just so that I can get a across the grain type cut for the rest of the uh, chops. Okay, there I have my chops, my back straps. Mm, mm, mm. Got the neck roast in there, and of course it goes without saying, I did not show it, but wash your meat thoroughly. Okay, I've packed my meat in a freezer bag. What I like to do is pack it good down good and tight, and then I'm going to roll it very carefully. Get all the air out of that bag that I can. I'll seal that up, mark it. And I will put the small bags into a larger freezer bag, just for extra protection. Okay, now I'm ready to start on the hindquarters. And I will remove all of this, all the skin, the fat. Um, and then I will separate the muscle groups. And I will show you, okay, as you uh, remove the outer skin here, you can start to see where the muscles separate here and you can run your fingers right in between the muscles. That's what you want to do. Clean them all up. Separate out the roast meat from the steak meat. Clean them up. Rinse them real good. And then you're going to want to cut your steaks here. Cross that grain. Cross the grain. Okay, here you can see how these muscles come apart. They're all separated. You take it in, they're just going to cut. They're just going to hack it, right? Two bone, everything. If you do it yourself, you get a chance to separate these muscle groups, making your meat more tender and also removing okay, more. Here we have separation. Got uh, big steaks there. And uh, you get this section here, it's really hard to deal with. You can make it breakfast steaks or like I like to just use it for my stew meat, but your choice. Anyway, you're going to have your big rump roast here. Um, you're going to have your leg roast here. And you can also eat this if you want. And then you have more steaks here. As you can see okay, how the muscles are separated. Right. Up with uh, your quarter. So basically got two good sets of steaks. Uh, I like to call these breakfast steaks. I just cut them up here and here. They are fairly tender. You will end up with this section here and it looks almost like a roast. There's not much you can do with it so that's hamburger. Got a rump roast and a leg roast. And that's your quartered out meat section. And there I have my packed venison all ready for the freezer. Double bagged and ready to go.